Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lace, and today we're going to be talking about Arknights, which is not something I cover very frequently. There's a very specific reason as to why I want to talk about Arknights today, and that is because we are actually getting the Fan Appreciation Event Part 1, which is a little bit weird to say. But really, what this is, is essentially the 1.5 year anniversary events. If anybody is on the fence about getting into Arknights, like, I think now is the time to give it a shot. There are so many awesome things that are about to happen, but, like, let me kind of, like, state the purpose of the video. I'm a day one player, and so I thought maybe you know i will give like kind of like an honest review of how i feel about the game after one and a half years i've stuck with it every day i don't think i've missed like too many dailies if any and so i think that i can provide a perspective that like is pretty honest and you know me i'm a pretty honest dude all right so that being said our agenda today is i'm just going to quickly run through what's part of the fan appreciation event and then i'm going to go through my thoughts on the game what i like about it what i don't like about it after one and a half years and if you guys want to give it a shot i'll definitely recommend it when i drop this video i think like we're going to have the event already. If you guys are already playing the game, let me know how you feel about it as well. I know a lot of you play Arknights already. It's a very popular game. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the fan appreciation event part one. So first we're getting chapter eight. So essentially this just means like free jemmies. Yes, to veterans like me, it means continuation of the story, but like to newer players, it just means free jemmies. Then we've got a sign in event in which we get a whole bunch of stuff. So essentially this is just energy and this is a lot of like items as well as a skin I see. Scrolling down, we have the new head hunt, which is what I'm so excited about. We've got Ross Montes and Mudrock, who I am super, super keen for. I'm more keen for Ross Montes because she's so freaking cute. But Mudrock is probably one of the most game-breaking meta-defining units. And that's pretty crazy to say considering she's also a defender. So for you guys who don't know, defenders are effectively your tanks. Moving on, we then have the fan appreciation special login event open. This is why if you were on the fence about starting, you should start like now. By the time this video drops, this game will probably be on maintenance and then after that, all of this should be online. So back to it, this is a free 10 pull on that limited banner. So if I was to actually go back up, I forgot to mention something, but this is actually a special banner in which one of the characters are limited, Ross Montes. That coupon that we just saw down here, the 10 roll, you can only use it on this banner. So hopefully maybe you go for Mudrock or Ross Montes on this. Otherwise, it's just your standard 10 pool and let's just keep going. Ooh, look at that. So in addition to that 10 pool, we also get one free roll every friggin' day. You cannot stack these guys up. So I highly recommend like finishing your re-rolls in your first day. And then so you can actually reap the rewards of these ones uh, from here until whenever it finishes. I believe it's um 14, yeah, about 14 days of free rolls. So you'll get like 24 in total. That's pretty good to be honest. So I don't know why they do this, but this is essentially a repeat of like the head hunting or like the banner above. So I'm just going to skip right past that. Next, we've got a couple of new skins for W for Texas and for Doberman. I know a lot of you have been waiting for these skins for a very long time and honestly, they're pretty lit. All right, moving on, we have a new furniture set, which is going to be pretty nice. Essentially, we have like a resource generating base and we have four rooms in which we can set furniture. And so this is one of the sets of furniture that we can actually use. Moving on, oh my God, this is so long. And moving on, it looks like they're giving us like some resources and some energy over this time period, this 14 day time period. Next, we've got the special gift. Ah, okay, this one is pretty nice. So essentially every day, we're going to get a box. This box is going to contain the currency that we use to roll on banners. So over these next 14 days, we'll get about 14 boxes and each of those boxes can contain 200, 300, 500, or 800 of the rolling currency. Yes, it's a gacha within a gacha. Free rolling currency, we freaking take that, man. Here we've got paid packs and these are quite nice if I was still like really serious about Arknights. So the first one's quite good. We're getting some premium currency. The second one, I believe is, oh, that's a lot of money for a lot of resources. But the most interesting one is actually the last one. So that's a $29.99 pack. And what this 29 99 pack does is it actually lets you select a six star operator from the headhunting pool up until this particular banner. So I believe that's everyone up until Phantom, I think, which is nice. It's a selector, but it is like 30 USD, I think. All right, with that being said, let's move on to part two. Oh my Lord. All right, I don't think there's too much left. So we've got these operators and these guys are going into the recruitment pool, which is awesome. Down, down, down. And we've got a new annihilation stage. So this is where we actually farm like the rolling currency. Down, down, down. So we can actually get this like themed furniture set from Lucky Drops. What that means is that like every time we finish a stage, we might get like a piece of the furniture. And then that is actually it. That is actually a crap load of content for like a 1.5 year anniversary. I remember the one year anniversary was quite stacked as well, but like that, <laughs> I don't know, that just seemed like overly generous. It's quite good. I'm very excited for it and I hope you guys are as well. All right, let's move on to the review of the game. How do I feel about the game after 1.5 years? Let's start with what I like about it. The interface is super clean. I think this is like kind of the gold standard, I suppose, for 
couple like gatches now. If it doesn't feel as clean as Arknights, I'm kind of like, ugh, I don't really want to play it. Some other games like Punishing Grey Raven, Blue Archive, like a lot of them kind of are starting to employ this kind of like interface. I think you guys know what I mean. Some older games, it just like looks like it's from like the 2000s or the 1990s. But yeah, just like look and feel, navigation through it all, it just makes me feel like I'm playing a really modern game. So like I was saying before, this is like the base and you can actually customize like some furniture in like these rooms. All right, since we're here already, this is our base and I don't have too many strong feelings about it. It's cool because it passively generates you resources, um, but otherwise I don't feel too much from it. They've added a few quality of life things to this, but like, again, like it's kind of like three to five minute effort every like 12 hours, I suppose. So yeah, the base management system, it's cool. You can like drop in the operators that you want to see in there and you can like, I don't know, like, like, I don't headshot them. What the frick? She's riding a scooter. Oh, all right, let's get out of the base. There's not much left to really talk about it. So the next thing I want to talk about is the recruitment system. So I'm just going to slap into it. And what this essentially is, is you can actually recruit characters without using your premium currency. Not all of the characters are actually available for recruiting. As you saw before, there were a couple of characters that were made available recently. But to be honest, the pool is quite big. I didn't mention it before, but like the rarity goes from like one to six star. Most units are at three, four, and five, and the rarest are at six. With this system, you can actually get a lot of the key six star units. However, the catch is that it's actually just very rare. But to be honest, I think I myself, after 1.5 years, I've probably gotten like maybe like six of them. That's actually quite a significant amount. So if I show you it, so I'm gonna hit this recruit now. And so it's a bunch of tags, right? And if you don't like these tags, what you can do is you can refresh it for like another set that you possibly want. I didn't get anything good here. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. This is a system I really like about Arknights and definitely is a contributor to its free to playness. I wish more gadget games had something like this, but alas, let's move on. Next, we've got the banners and I want to talk about something before that and that is the character design so the character design you can see like it's not like it's not like ultra skimpy it's not like ultra ultra waifu it's very waifu but it's not like ultra waifu all of the character designs I feel uh, okay actually you know what let me get into the, my operators that sounds a little bit sus but that's all right but what I'm trying to say is like everyone is so elegant or they like look really good it's not like everyone is just like a hot ultra waifu with like a bikini on like they're also like majestic and elegant it's actually like really really nice all right this one is a little bit questionable but like you know she's like it's just very very tasteful that's actually a massive reason as to why i really like this game i personally don't like it when like boobs and ass are just all over the game i quite like like some level of tact and like they're also well designed i like characters that are you know like sexy and pretty but also cool like that is sexy and pretty and cool i think these days sexy and pretty is just not a look at that that's freaking awesome all right let's get out of here and go back into the gacha here we've got the head hunt system and this is actually where i don't really like it let's talk about the good things about this so the six star rate is two percent I'm going to open this up and you can see that it is here 2%. However, what you saw above is probably one of the things I don't like, which is that the characters, the banner characters account for 50% of the odds if you get the highest rarity unit. So if you hit that 2%, you only have a 50% chance of actually getting these two. What's infuriating about this is that you could go like six times getting six stars and still not get these two. This kind of actually gets me to compare it to Genshin where like if you fail your highest rarity roll once, you will definitely get your highest rarity the next time. So there's kind of like a defined limit in which like, you know, to stop your losses. You know that within 180 pulls, you will get the unit you want in Genshin. But for this one, you could be very, very unlucky in which I was in one of my videos. We'll talk about that another time, but the same goes for the five stars actually. The thing I do like about Arknight system over Genshin is the pity system. So if by your 50th roll, you haven't gotten a six star yet, the chance of getting a six star is actually boosted 2% every roll. So for example, you've rolled 50 times you're going for your 51st roll. That 51st roll is going to actually have a 4% chance at getting a 6 star. The next one is going to have a 6% chance. And so it's just kind of building up and up. So what usually happens is that you actually hit your pity quite early. And that's really awesome. And I think Genshin kind of does that. Like from 75 onwards, you do get a higher chance. All right, let's talk about the last thing that I really like about the gacha. And it's that the pity actually carries over between each banners, except for the limited ones. It's kind of okay because the limited banners come like every six months. But between all of the other banners, the pity actually carries over. And that just feels really good it just gives you a really great experience because it makes you feel like you're not wasting any rolls yes you might get junk from it but at least like you know it actually matters in the grand scheme of things i really do like that and i wish that every gacha did it i really wish that precon did it but like after freaking three years they still haven't done something like that so i doubt they will all right so the next thing we're going to look at is the stages themselves so what's really interesting is that this annihilation is actually a way to farm the premium currency to roll this is nice ish so if you have a look at this number this amount 
costs to about like two and a bit rolls. So each roll costs 600 orundum. You probably have to expend like 150 energy or something to hit this cap every week. It's pretty straightforward, but it's kind of like auto and that's kind of it. As for the gameplay itself, so <laughs> I quite like it because it's very tactical. So I'm going to run this stage and let me hit the start button so you can see what it actually looks like. I think that this is probably one of like the most well-made tactical games i suppose it is like a tower defense and like i do like it I, I do like it a lot so you're essentially like trying to block all of these enemies kill them before they can get to your blue zone so what it's doing now is it's actually just auto deploying and that's something that i really don't like about this game it's auto deploying because there are no skip tickets or anything and i think if they introduce skip tickets everybody would realize that there's not actually much content in arc knights so as this is running through you can see that i'm like dropping down operators and they're just like you know killing the enemies it's, it's kind of like your uh, oh, oh, maybe like plants versus zombie kind of like scenario but yeah it's just like you know it's cool gameplay i had to figure this out like once upon a time and now it's like you know i'm just like murking them some of the like stages get really really hectic or like really challenging and like you got to use like several different mechanics or like it's just gotten really crazy in the past like few months i was about to say years but like you know we're only at 1.5 years man all right so let's finish the stage off we're gonna kill the last one and we're gonna finish it now and so we get a bunch of jobs and that's kind of like it I'll come back out that's kind of it we've also got like the archives which i like so this metal system honestly this metal system is going to be the death of me but essentially whenever there's an event or anything like there's a bunch of medals that you can earn so it's kind of like achievements for each of these events some of them you can miss out on which i don't like i have massive fomo so you know huh <laughs> oh they always get me they always freaking get me. But yeah, like if the events have reruns, you can definitely get them again. But then for like a special type of event called contingency contract, we, I don't think we can ever get these ones again. With that being said though, don't let that discourage you from starting this game because it is actually still a really freaking awesome game. So I think they actually have like a whole bunch of like archives of all the stuff from different events, like a collection of the cutscenes and all of that. So you can actually read all of the like material that has passed. And I really like that because it means that you can skip through it when you're smashing through it on like the very last day. <laughs> Yeah, I'm talking from personal experience. Next thing, store. So this is really nice. So the highlight of the store is actually the yellow distinction store. And what that means is that you can actually purchase six stars that go on rotation here. Usually there is like a four to six month wait time. So like a character gets released and only about like four to six months later do they get into the store. But nevertheless, like look at this, 180 tickets for a six star. And I probably have like above average because I'm a freaking hoarder. The other thing to spend your yellow currency, AKA distinctions on is actually the headhunting permits so this is essentially just like your premium role so i think in total you can get up to like 38 rolls a month so now the question is how do you get this yellow currency and this is actually really interesting it's really interesting because it actually tells you down here so essentially what you have to do is get duplicates of like the operators if you get a six star you get one yellow certificate if it's a duplicate you get an extra 10 however the real money maker is probably in the four and the five stars if you get a dupe of a five you get extra five yellow tickets but every time you get a four star oh look you actually don't get any yellow certificates after the first time almost so if you come down here we've got redemption rewards so what this first line is saying is essentially if you have maxed out a four star character and you continue to get their dupes you can trade those dupes for these yellow certificates so i'm going to come back over here back to this recruitment system and i'm just going to say that this is a massive source of four stars four stars are relatively common they're not like that common i'd say maybe like 20 percent chance to get it and so you can see how i've kind of like amassed all of those freaking tickets other than that let's have a look at the first furniture store so you can see that you can actually pay in two different currencies this one is farmable and this one is premium and yeah that's kind of it actually one last thing and that is the monthly card so this is probably like one of the monthlies that i deem like the most worth it it's five dollars usd i don't have it active now just because i simply don't feel the need to i'd been buying it for like maybe maybe a year or so now i'm just like yeah i don't think i need this it gives you a total of 10 rolls and some of like the premium currency as well as some energy that you can use every day compared to a lot of other monthlies like pre-con for me it's 12 dollars this one is five dollars usd but it's really like eight dollars for me so eight dollars for this versus twelve dollars for pre-con when i first started pre-con honestly i looked at the monthly and i was like mm, this one feels a little bit steep luckily for pre-con i'm at that point where i'm kind of like oh, i don't think i need it anymore but yeah i feel like this makes it so that low spenders like you know they'll have a good time this one just like feels like value it may not be value but it feels like it all right i think i've actually kind of like run through everything this last thing to talk about is like generosity it's probably something that these guys could work on they don't feel that generous it's only at these 
big events like the one year or the one and a half year or something where we get loaded kind of with some currency and stuff. But otherwise, it feels like kind of normal. The fact that the pity carries over is probably giving us a way better experience than like if it hadn't. Yeah, otherwise, I think that's kind of it. So would I recommend this game to somebody starting today or tomorrow? Hell yeah. It's a very, very fun tactical game, especially contingency contract. It just feels really good when you like kind of solve a problem because essentially what you're doing is like it's kind of like a puzzle book actually. But yeah, all in all, it just feels like so freaking good when you finish this stage. You can actually like, you know, have a look at each one of them. It pretty much like looks like a puzzle, right? Except you're using your waifus to clear the puzzles like... <laughs> That feels so good, man. In summary, it's a good game. I like it. Would recommend. I'm not sponsored by Ark Knights, but hey, you know what I'm saying? You want to give me that? My DMs are open. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But yeah, that's kind of it. It's like a solo PvE kind of experience. There's not much of any multiplayer and there's a lot of cute waifus. It's tactical and I guess that's a pretty good summary of the game. All right, this video is going to be hella long. I appreciate you guys for sticking it out with me. I've got a secret question because I know a lot of you guys already play Ark Knights. How long have you guys been playing for and what would you rate the game out of 10? I'll probably give it like a solid 8.5 because like it's really tactical and I like that. I know a lot of people don't like tactical games, but at that point, it's just taste. And if you guys aren't already into Ark Knights, like, well, let me know. Are you guys going to give it a shot? Did I compel you? Did I persuade you? Drop your answer down below. It'll be interesting to see. All right, with well, that being said, that brings us to the end of the video. So if this video has helped you or it was kind of entertaining, consider liking, subscribing, following, pinning. I do need to make it clear that this is probably like a one-off video. I don't do Ark Knights videos, but I definitely do like more like the variety games. Gatches. I will be looking at a lot more gatches in the future and like bringing them to you guys. First impressions, gameplays, like upcoming games, like, you know, games that you're hyped for, stuff like that, because I'm always on the prowl for another game too. And I want to share that hype. So let's freaking go. With all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.